can say as many times as you like tonight, it's not going in the episode. I'm editing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> challenge accepted. <Yeah. laughs> what can I change it to to make it sound more friendly and innocent? <laughs> Just maybe prune or something like that, because it's always referring to me in the garden, isn't it? So. Hello and welcome to number one crude mistakes with myself, Glenn from Number One Projects, KJ from Crude but Efficient, and from all... <laughs> Oh no, we broke Glenn. Oh, we broke me. Oh dear. It's not that I don't have things on the list. I don't even have a list, uh, so <laughs> it's uh, I haven't focused on that today. Obviously, uh, since I've been sleeping, <laughs> you didn't dream uh, up anything nice. <laughs> no. Uh, what What was nice, of course, I, I woke up today and did feel a bit under the weather and like, yeah, I, I'm in no position of getting the kids to kindergarten and school, so I just had to, well, basically call them in sick as well. So, yeah. They have been roaming around the living room, watching TV and redecorating the entire house while I've been passed out <laughs> in bed. Uh, just came in and checked on me every once in a while. But no, they've been really joyful to spend the day with. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Was it reversible decorating or permanent decorating they've been doing? No, it's all reversible, which is good. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so just some tidying up needed to be done. So yeah, I have uh, nothing prepared to talk about today, and I was kind of hoping that uh, you had an edit and a video ready that I could binge before this episode, but uh, I can't see anything dropped yet. Or oh, it's it's actually all done, but I've not I've not pressed public. <sighs> do you want to pause it for thirteen minutes? Jeez, <laughs> we can do it. We can do it live, can't we? Just. Uh... Press play, turn off the volume, and uh, we can give you the live commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some other time. <laughs> oh, now you get uh, conscious about your own video. And... <laughs> my, my English is not good enough for live commentary unless I had uh, a couple of glasses of whiskey. So, uh, yeah, another time. My English is not good enough for live commentary, says the guy that records a two hours worth of podcast every week. Yeah, well, that, that's just... <laughs> it's not scripted. We take out a few pauses and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, that's what people think. I mean, we record for five hours straight and then we cut it down to 40 minutes episodes. So. <laughs> and that's just him rambling. He's not talking about something specific. No, it's just me searching for words. No, Havar, they wished we edited it down to 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll give them something to cry about. I'm I'm editing the uh, the padlock video and uh, got it down from three hours to one hour and fifty yesterday. And I was like spending ten minutes before we started recording here, re revisiting. And I I have the painting part and I mean putting on filler, primer, sanding. Uh, that is boring real time while you're doing it and <laughs> watching it back on video. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, yeah, it should be classified as torture in some Geneva convention, I think, because this is, <laughs> this is cruel and I, I keep cutting things. And of course I, I do ramble on, um, uh, while I do sanding. So of course, when I cut it down, of course, there is no coherent, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in anything that I say, uh, even less than usual. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, like quick montages in there. But uh, yeah. Then why did you film all that? I mean, you, you press play and, and like when you start working with filler, you it gets kind of messy and you don't want to like push the buttons on the camera. So it's just, I have 40 minutes clip of everything so uh <laughs> and of course i can go through every clip and cut them down so i have like the small snippets i want to use but you're still gonna have to use the time and it's boring so i just load them onto the timeline and make sure they are in their correct order uh and then i just start slicing and dicing and i, I use I found the music 
clip this time relatively fast. So I'm just using that to make sure that all the like the build montages are uh, decently sized to fit the music. So, but yeah, I I'm, I'm still looking at uh, over an hour worth of video, and I need to cut it down because <clears throat> it's oh so boring. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> but it's going to be an exclusive. <laughs> it's going to be. A, well, I, I should swap it around because the 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 followers on Patreon they they should get the good stuff. But I mean, un- <laughs> unloading the longer build video onto them, it's like I should do it the other way. I should post a long one on YouTube, and <laughs> well, if you want a shorter, more interesting one, then you should join Patreon. <laughs> I mean, that is a really interesting business idea. It's <laughs> a really good way to lose all of your subscribers, I think. <laughs> that yeah, might also well, like, be. Yeah. At, least you'll still have, at least you'll still have your three patrons, so that's all that really matters, isn't it? Yeah. Those are some <laughs> magnificent blokes. Uh, and why they stick around beats me, but uh, I'm, I'm very happy that they do. <laughs> it is kind of uh, weird with the patron thing that I mean, you have friends who pay you to hang out, more or less. It feels a bit sad when you think about it. Like your m- mom sending a bar of chocolate with you when you go visit a friend so they would like you more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even use Patreon to communicate because I have everyone on WhatsApp and we're continuously talking and uh, sharing pictures yeah. of projects and <laughs> whatnot. Not so like, why are we hanging there? I just, oh, it's just a place for us to drop money in your account. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's a weird one. Uh, I, I, I watched a video today about landfills. I think it's called the Practical Engineer, and it, oh, it yeah. was really interesting. And then he he name dropped another channel um, that also looks into the thing you take for granted in everyday life. And uh, those videos drop first at Nebula, which is, it's a streaming service, but like YouTube, uh, but of course you have to pay to get no ads and so on. And it's basically where uh, makers hang out. But I, I think it's the more, well, upper branch of the maker society that make tutorials and a really interesting production, not uh, people wanking off in the workshop to every idea that pops up into their head. So, uh, but yeah, I do like the idea of uh, like a, a YouTube for makers where they, they really cut to the nitty gritty. But um... yeah, I think a lot of, I mean, lots, but some people have tried to start communities and things like that. And so far, I don't think anything has worked out. But well, not not nice. having the the direct integration into uh, the Google systems and infrastructure and uh, of course uh, cash stream, it's hard to start something new that can rival YouTube. I think. Yeah. But people keep trying, and someday someone will make it. And of course, don't know about you guys, but I'm going to be late to that party as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, it was. I stopped uh, replying to invites a long time ago. When it comes to parties of that kind, <laughs> like, nope. <laughs> I think it was a while ago. Bourbon Moss spoke about a um, another channel which was like YouTube, that you could just move your videos from YouTube to. And um, I tried to get it in uh, this country, but it wasn't available. And I think it's since just disappeared. It's just faded away to nothing. Mm. But I can't remember what the hell it was called now. No, I don't remember either. I remember he mentioned it, and I just checked it out, and like there was nothing there at that time, and I haven't heard anything since. So, I mean, the the best thing you could do, I think, is trying to find the YouTube equivalent in India or China and try to get on that if you want. <laughs> if you want the big market, there's no money in India, though, is there? Yeah, that's no, true, but do we do but... it for the money? How much do you get paid? Yeah, I don't get paid, but exactly, <laughs> I quite like the possibility of it. <laughs> I mean, I thought you just wanted a lot of likes and views and that sort of thing, and then 
Well, that, that's that's good as well. <laughs> I am quite addicted to the likes. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't care about the money either. I just I just want to hit four thousand so bad. I mean, I've been tasting that number now for a year, and it's like <laughs> yeah, lost four subscriber again this oh, week. No. So yeah, but I had like a. I mean, it's an upswing. Uh, I mean, they, they keep getting followers and uh, a lot of likes on the KitchenAid machines over at TikTok, and people keep reposting them. So I get like these surges where people come and like them. So I'm closing on a hundred thousand views on the, one of them, on a couple of thousand on the the shorter one. So uh, mm -hmm. nice, but okay. that doesn't transfer to YouTube at all. So no, mm -hmm. it doesn't tend to from Instagram either, does it? No, so that's the um, that's the plan now. For I'm watching the um, the weather forecast. It's going to be decent weather Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I, I'm thinking, all right. Let's say I have home office on Friday. I get the kids off to school in kindergarten. Then I head over to the bridge and film the intro. I have the I have the script ready and it should be a 10 minute ordeal if everything goes to plan. And I also thought, should I rig myself so I also can film the, um, the vertical video? Because I realized that the, the shorter version, I can just as well really cut it down and just do a 10 second montage of me building it and then just put the intro and outro and slap it on TikTok and Instagram because people don't have the attention span more than 20 seconds. So the one minute limit on a reel is more than enough or 90 seconds or what it is now. I'm not sure. Yeah, I um, I make my reels to 30 seconds generally because that's my attention span. <laughs> <laughs> well, we base it on ourselves. Yep. <laughs> it really should have a, a camera mount like two phones at the same time, one vertical, one horizontal. And yeah. Do everything at once. I have been filming on two phones, doing vertical and horizontal, and then I encountered the first problem whilst editing this evening, and that is while you're pressing record on one phone, you pick up the beep as it starts recording on the other one. Yeah, yeah that, then you can <laughs> sync the uh, the audio if one is yeah. better than the other. <laughs> That's the thing. I did something that I've been thinking about for a long time, but I, I bought a tripod uh, for like table use, not not the, the full standing floor type tripod. And I really like the the quick connection plate uh, on the larger uh, tripod, but on the smaller one, you have to unscrew a screw and take the camera off. So it's been a pain in the ass switching between those two. And then I stumbled over someone who sells just that connector plate because all the other places I've been looking, you had to buy the entire like gimbal assembly, which is kind of expensive. That's the most expensive part on, of the entire tripod setup. But now I found for a few dollars just that connector plate. So now I can actually just quick connect my camera between those two tripods and it's been like a game changer did you only buy one yeah because i have uh well i have two now so and they match both tripods so i have one for my well horizontal standard camera and then i have like the the iRig metal mount that I used for my phone, I smacked the other plate on that one. So I can use both my phone and my camera with different tripods and they're interchangeable. And of course that metal iRig for the phone also have a lot of accessories for uh, mounting other things. So I can mount my camera on that as well. So I can actually make myself a, a vertical horizontal rig, but gets big and cumbersome and as you yeah. say you have to remember press uh, record on both of them and both of yeah. them needs to be charged and then there is the wireless mics that doesn't go into the phone and the camera so it should double up on those now i know uh i know that Rud has a double set of where you can have two microphones on one receiver so i could 
look into if they have like can you have one microphone delivering audio to several receivers but it gets <laughs> complicated <laughs> and expensive yeah yeah you should really have a, uh, a secondary recording instead of the audio and just sync it like a professional yeah i think that's much easier and, that... and then you have the camera uh, audio as a backup <laughs> when you forget to turn on your microphone <laughs> and that was it was such a joy when I switched to DaVinci and you got over that first threshold of switching to new software. And I found that audio alignment tool where he just analyzed the audio of two video clips and like, all right, these are the similarities. And he just lines them up on the timeline. And that is previously it... I did I did move the timelines to <laughs> just listen to the audio sync and then of course if you have like a millisecond drift it sounds okay for a couple of minutes but then you get yeah. out in the video it's like this looks a bit off yeah that's a, yeah what did you say that function was called <laughs> <laughs> I have not found it at least um I'll check it later I need to I don't remember what it's called yeah. but it's uh you send me uh, uh, some information, and I put it in the description of the this episode for anyone else who used Da Vinci and like me didn't I just, know. I, th that I think existed. I just I just marked the different clips that I know have the same audio, and I just right click on the uh, um, the audio timeline. I think, and there there was some sync option there. It was stupidly easy once you just knew it was there. Nice. Not just line the tracks up at the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's basically. I think. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> out, <laughs> out, auto backlining. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that could have been useful for my latest video. <laughs> I, I spent at least fifteen, twenty minutes trying to align the audio for the intro clip because that oh. was. Yeah, uh, I had one uh, audio file, a long one, and like three different clips, video clips, and trying to find where it fit in in uh, yeah it was it wasn't fun i'm so glad the podcast tracks line up nowadays i used to have such a bloody hell of a job on trying to <laughs> line the tracks up it, the difference is so minute to me i know it doesn't sound right but i can't figure out which way to push it it <laughs> really used to wind me up that did but so I'm so glad that sorted itself out when you say that I'm not taking my hat off for Riverside quite yet, but it feels it's gotten a bit better. I don't I think, think we've so. had much audio drift yeah. lately. No. no. No, not for quite a few episodes. Hey, let's Yay. say that tonight when it's my edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Knock on the wood. Just accumulating, so <laughs> all shit hits all fans tonight. <laughs> <laughs> all shits, all fans, all night. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so KJ, what have you been up to this week? Anything good? Uh, it feels like I have had a lot of time to do stuff, but I don't think I have done that much stuff. I I, I have uh, fixed one of my previous mistakes. The the power knife uh, is now uh, uh, wireless uh, and actually <laughs> functional and doesn't blind you and isn't a death trap. So that's nice. <laughs> Yeah, you sent us uh, pictures of that. It looks fantastic. Yeah. I don't um, really know where to put it now, though, because previously <laughs> I had it hung from the ceiling in its cord, but now it doesn't have a cord. So I, I don't want to make a sheath for it because then you can't see the light. And yeah, I don't know where to put it. <laughs> you could well, make I... these uh, miniature uh, samurai sword holder thing. In the box. <laughs> it, could be be cool. a, it could be on your desk at your office. Yeah. <laughs> it's a statement piece having a knife at your desk that's oh it's it's just a light that's actually an interesting <laughs> idea take it into the office and yeah i have it in guess i get an envelope and i have to <laughs> how have you managed to get it to work on four and a half volts instead of 240 as it was uh because i changed the the light uh, thingy uh, from a light bulb to a led noodle as they're called uh, oh, okay. So it's a flexible filament in different colors, and it oh, goes cool. on. Uh, I think it's three volts. Right. Um, Boilai Hobby Time uh, uh, diorama maker uses them all the time, and they are great for making small lights. That's not uh, too screaming in your eyes, and it's not 
just the, the boring LEDs one after another. It's just a, it's a stretch of them. Can you trim it, trim that down to length? Then, or? No, you have to. Uh, but they, they come in. <laughs> so you have three so. meters spare in the handle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, 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 I mean, I actually designed the knife with one of these filaments in mind, but I got, uh, well, I, I tried to be, to be, well, I, tried, I, I was cheap and ordered it from uh, a place uh, far, far away and it uh, didn't arrive. So uh, oh. then I had to order it from another place and that didn't arrive in time for the video. Because we had a set uh, deadline for that, yes. so then I had to go. Because my plan was, if I got it in time, I would rip out what I've already done and put this in instead because it's much better. Uh, but now I get two videos or at least one and a half out of it, so that's something. That's cool. <laughs> when can we expect the video? Uh, when I'm done editing. <laughs> <laughs> I have started sometime uh, next year. Then, <laughs> yeah, I'm not the fastest, but this—I mean, this is the next video I'm going to publish. So that's yeah. something I'm—I'm—I'm I'm, uh, I'm catching up to my backlog. I mean, don't sell yourself short. Uh, I don't think it's a speed thing, but you have a lot of edits at the same time, <laughs> usually. <laughs> yeah, at the moment I have two, uh, but I mean, it just when you have the time over, you just. You don't want to sit by a computer and fiddle with it when you have other stuff you can do. <laughs> yeah, true. But the question is then, is it RGB? So do you have one of those remote controls in your pocket so you can change color on it as well? No, Ooh. no. Uh, because then I, I had some color, idea for the video because you can do a, like a, a Star Wars spoof where, where you can do <laughs> come to the dark side and you had the red color and then you can switch to green and blue and... Well, if if I'm willing to do some soldering in between, I could do that because I have some different uh, different filaments. <laughs> but uh, no, no, we're not doing that. But well, I'm kind of looking forward to that when you're talking about soldering because I got some welding done this week. I had a really productive Sunday, I think it was, and then I realized I, I need to host uh, and blow down my workshop before the winter because when you get up now in the morning, it's it's really dewy everywhere it's cold the air is kind of raw yeah uh, and i realized that uh, i'm not gonna take my table saw table out in the yard anymore then it's going to be a special project i need to get done before winter so i'm really looking forward to i had one larger project that i thought i could pull off this summer but no it's gonna have to be for next year so now i can go back to like the smaller projects, the one you can basically do on your kitchen table and some small electronics is not uh, like building a huge table and weld and grind and sand and everything that you need to do outdoors. So, uh, so no super soaker video. Well, I forgot the super soaker as well. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't sound like a winter project. It sounds like, uh, oh, spring is here. Yeah, and that's course. that's also a thing. I could I could do the padlock video, and then if 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 the autumn is nice, and I could pull it off. But it would be a stress build just to have the video in time, and by the time it was done, you can bet there would be snow. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you so, were really so. quick at getting videos out, actually, Havar. It's uh, it's all slowed down a little bit lately. Yeah, it's uh, I'm just not feeling the pressure like you did before. Or... It is that he forgot to, to push stop on the video, so he gets <laughs> yeah. four hours of footage to go through. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's a combination, I guess. I mean, one thing it's summer, you want to do other things as well, and you have a garden that constantly keep growing and an old house, and yeah, then there's the family and job and everything. So yeah, it's uh. Yeah, the, the job keeps getting in the way of all the fun stuff. So yeah. But so join his patron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. Get me out of work so I can do <laughs> fun stuff. <laughs> Get those long unedited videos. <laughs> <laughs> do 
you like slow, <laughs> rambling, uninteresting videos about things you did not know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see some. Uh, I should work in some uh, Patreon uh, ads to to sell it in. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a workshop friend who just talks and talks and talks about his stuff <laughs> and never shut up? Yeah. <laughs> oh me me me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if I could try the other way around. I mean, uh, well, if enough people pay me, I don't post videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be a harder sell. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, I would like you to carry on posting videos. I like your edited videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and no, that's the thing. I'm going to continue because it is it is for fun and therapy, and it's a combination of everything you like to do. In your spare time, so yeah. Yeah. I wonder how it would feel to stop. That would be really weird, wouldn't it? Yeah, it really would. It's, Where would um, all the IDs go? I don't know. It's been my life for getting on for two years now. Yeah. Just stop, sell their house, move into the smallest apartment ever, and just. <laughs> this is my life. And don't now. film it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be so sad. I mean, you could just as well go to jail, almost. It like. sounded like you were describing jail, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that would be terrible. I could. I mean, I've been living in flats and apartments, uh, I mean, while while studying and working early on. But of course, I always had uh, the possibility to go back home uh, in the weekends and use my my parents' garage and workshop, so I can't really not envision how it would be without that. Of course, I do I do like to do drawing and writing as well, so I'd probably do that, but just do that? Ooh, that would be cumbersome. Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably just have to go back to fishing and thinking about things all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Oh, being left alone with your own mind, that uh, that's that's a <laughs> scary picture there. So yeah, no. If it was hard enough on holiday, I'd figured out how to make that whole lamp while I was on holiday. That's all I could not all I could think about, but it was quite quite prominent in my thoughts, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what you've been up to this past week, Len? So I finished the lamp. I've just put it out on Instagram as a finished thing, not a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent you to a picture at the weekend when it was half done. And I mean, you, can, you, you can put instantly, it. Just instantly said, that's not a lamp, that's a pipe. That's a brilliant, <laughs> massive pipe. <laughs> you, you can put as many light bulbs you want in it. It's, it's, it's still a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think once it's in its holder, it looks more like a lamp. Back but to differ. <laughs> I'm really happy that it's not a pipe because, of course, in my logo, I'm smoking a pipe, which I have yeah. never done. And then when I we discussed it last week of doing a a new sticker run in KJ style with my own face reenacting the logo, I need a pipe. And then, of course, I. A decent one is expensive and I don't smoke, so that's a waste. So should I get like one of those for dressing up or whatnot? But then I saw your lamp and it's like, oh, I made a giant padlock. I need a giant ass pipe. So that blows bubbles. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, when I saw your, I was, should I find it? Should I send it to him? Because I have this. Um, my father was into house plants uh, and he bought these uh, ultrasonic water vaporizers that make yeah, like the smoke yeah. that come out of the pots. And I have one that yeah. would fit right into that pot. So you could put like a <laughs> cup in, you could put that in, you could have like smoke pouring out of it. So, yeah, that's just one other thing. I just, uh, it, I put it on the weight uh, towards uh, a lathe. But it would be fun getting a metal lathe, and the first thing I do is wood turning on it because I need a pipe. I think it'd be great to turn an aluminium one, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, or brass. But brass yes. is expensive and, and it's heavy. 
and grippy <laughs> as well. I mean, uh, yeah. it's it's also it really, uh, uh, yeah. If you don't do it right uh, the first time when you're turning, it really flings uh, heavy metal around the room. So <laughs> maybe get a face shield. Nah, it's just squint. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I um, I got the lamp done anyway, and um, so I've been editing the past couple of days, and the video is all edited and ready to go out. I think I'll release it tomorrow. So yes. by the time this comes out, it will be released, and uh, you'll have to see if you can spot the Werther's original in this one. Nobody commented on the Werther's original in the last lathe video. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like... Oh, <laughs> You were too sneaky. Having your... Easter egg that is in every video. I, I like that concept, and it's like, yeah, yeah. Should I do that? Should I find something? Yeah, yeah. I'll think about to, it. You have to think of a good Easter egg, like, like the Burgers one. Yeah, and I wish I'd thought about that, <laughs> like, sixty-eight videos ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you could like, I have an Easter egg that is present in all my videos. And if you find what it is, and then you have a price. And then, because then you get people to watch all their videos to try and find that common thing. And if you don't have one, they're going to spend a lot of time trying to find something that's not there. So, watch the common thing is me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was you all along. Angry. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I split my videos up into playlists mostly. So, it's workshop videos or uh, musical instruments and tonight I created a new one for blade videos or wood turning videos mm. so that's made it easy to put all my easter eggs into there and not it be a new thing for the whole for the whole channel you know what I mean but maybe you just need to uh, start a new playlist and a new series of videos yeah and you can add your easter eggs what do you think you would use It would be uh, most likely it would be a kazoo or a recorder yeah. or something propped up <laughs> some, yeah, somewhere. But, like you. but you I, have I have so many of those, so I'm, I'm betting that if you look at every video, <laughs> that you're going to see one somewhere. <laughs> KJ should absolutely have a pair of balls in each one of these. <laughs> I mean, that, that could be interesting. I mean, th th that's... Uh, this is when you should have uh, an intern that could go through all your videos and try to find something. Oh, a common thing. A common thing. That Angle grinder. <laughs> yeah, that's in a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, but yeah. I... Oh, sorry. No, go on. Uh, I, have, I have an angle grinder related uh, question because I now need to polish some metal and... Of course, you, you get a lot of attachment for angle grinders, and you get various kinds of uh, paste and whatnot. And uh, of course, I don't. I want one pad that does everything. I don't want to buy uh, 15 different and work all the grades up. You should just, I mean, it's an angle grinder. You should put it to max and then just use the fine at the beginning. I mean. <laughs> so if you got. Have you got like a cotton pad for it? Or I don't know what the pad is. I've got a polishing pad on my. Uh, bench grinder no so i have to buy it and that's the thing i, I don't want to buy yeah. a lot of things that turn out doesn't work so well, if, you, if you can buy one of those i i just bought a they're like a i bought four sticks of it's like a wax and the black one just seems to make things shiny when i put that on the polishing wheel first yeah so that's the way i figured it out <laughs> what rpm should you have for polishing shouldn't that be kind of low the bench, the bench grind is pretty quick. I mean, it's not as fast as an angle grinder, but it's still very quick. Yeah, I would get around eleven thousand. That's that's what my angle grinder goes to. So, yeah, that's, I'm, that's, I'm that's, that's what thinking, it is. Isn't that a bit fast for polishing, or is nah. that good? I don't know. I never polished anything. That'd be fine. You might have to just sand that lettering off the um, bar first. Yeah. So I, I generally, if it's got a, a coating on, I'll, I'll sand it to three twenty and then put it on the polishing wheel, and it polishes up really quickly after that. Because they they got some they they, they call them uh, something polishing, uh, and it's it's light, medium, and heavy duty, and it's it 
it looks like hardened noodles, basically. So it's really abrasive, but it's not sandpaper. And I think if I buy one of those just to get all the markings off and so on, and then yeah, I'll put on something and polish it. I'm not going to bring it to a mirror shine. So it's going to be still metal, but it's it's very much in its raw form now. It's probably easier just to spray it silver, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, but then you have to degrease and you have to, like, yeah. it's a pain in the ass. And it's, at least for the one I'm keeping, it's a tight fit already. So if I put any kind of uh, coating on it, That's it right. will not fit into the holes. Uh, now, yeah. I actually did on the the padlock that's going on the bridge, I actually made the holes a little bit uh, bigger uh, with the Dremel tool. So it, it just slots together really well. So I'm just going to... Like uh, put uh, two strips of uh, glue in there and just uh, put it on and then <laughs> film it and run away. <laughs> Do you think there's going to be many people about when you film? Yeah, uh, not not that many, but it is uh, the main walking bridge from one side of the river to the other. So there will be people commuting, but. Uh, I've written the script, so it's like, it's two sentences, and then I move, and I need to film some of the padlocks, who is there, and yeah, I mean, as long as there's not many people, it's like, if there's one or two coming over, I can just say, morning, morning, and then they will just see a weirdo with a tripod, and they will just, all right, <laughs> move, move along. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It's, it's quite embarrassing to do something like that, but it really doesn't matter. You're never going to see these people again. No. It doesn't matter. What, what you really need is a team. Yeah, because then you're not an alone weirdo. Then it's yeah, it's something <laughs> with a with a purpose. It's more intentional. Yeah, <laughs> have your wife in a high vis jacket uh, holding the camera. And... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, then it's official. Yeah, I do also have these. Uh, it's not police tape, but it is the kind of tape where you use to close off areas and so on. So, I kind of, of course, then have my wife close the bridge off. And, but yeah, maybe you not really the draw attention. Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do now. I've done this project. Where to go next? I've not got anything in mind. I've got a few little things, but nothing. Nothing. Nothing serious. major. Nothing calling what? out to you. Not really, hmm. but that's okay. I'm not worried. Something will pop in that noggin of mine at some point. <laughs> I, I'm on the other end of that spectrum because I, I was there, uh, but then something just, uh, well, uh, I got the spirit or whatever uh, on Sunday. So the tabletop that the CNC ruined on me, I just thought, all right, I didn't plan for this to be a YouTube video. Well, it is now. So I went into the workshop while I was waiting for the paint to dry on the padlocks, and I just filmed an intro where I rambled on about uh, how the CNC fucked me and how I now have to redo the entire thing. How and the then... CNC fucked me, that's a really good title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A that's little a bit creative on the thumbnail, thumbnail as well. Yeah. It's going to be a real eye catcher, that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just blur the, the spindle part and have you looking, ooh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, giving that's a completely new meaning to getting drilled. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so I actually I welded up the, um, the table legs. And of course, uh, I was going to drill some holes in them to attach the, the, the feet. And then, of course, I didn't use any guide uh, other than my poor eyesight. So I drilled some crooked holes, uh, looked decent <laughs> on one side, came out not <laughs> relatively center on the other side. But then I thought, why do I need to put a bolt through and a nut on the other side that comes like crooked? Um, I have a welder now. So... Of course, I'm just going to put a, a threaded rod in and just stop at the second hole, which is not in line. And I'm just going to weld it there and grind it down because I'm going to paint the legs anyway. And then I have a, a welded bolt that or basically a stud on the other side. So I just put on the feet and a nut on the other side. So nothing will ever be seen. So I was kind of pleased with that solution. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Because it was five minutes there when I really fucked up and I was looking at it and... Well, it's it's gonna be my table, so I'm I'm not redoing that. But um, 
or I could do this. Oh, that's cool. And then I get to try <laughs> something new as well. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a more fun, I would say, just welding something and just polishing it and trying to hide it that it's actually welded there because you can do that with metal. Uh, but the problem is, though, <laughs> I thought about using that same when I'm going to attach the legs to the oak tabletop. Of course, I, I wanted to drill the holes in the table legs and then just put those onto the tabletop and use those as guides to drill through the tabletop because on the tabletop there's going to be some very nice brass screws that is countersunk on the top hmm. but if those are not in line it's going to show <laughs> yeah so uh, of course i'm going to drill through the tabletop first but getting those holes to line up with the legs i should have uh, like not the mag drill, of course. I, w I want that as well. But you should uh, get one of those, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, definite want. Don't, don't not need. Yeah, and then of course, but uh, you have this drill guides for woodworking, uh, which you can clamp on, and you have those which has a big, relatively big footprint that you can use to get uh, actually ninety degree holes on things. So I was kind of thinking this might be the, yeah. The time to get that into my AliExpress uh, shopping cart. So, uh... I think Evolution Tools make one uh, mag drill. I don't, I'm pretty sure it's under three hundred quid. Which doesn't seem too bad for a mag drill. Well, from mag drill, I thought if that yeah. was just a regular drill guide, that was kind of pricey. No, no, but... no, no. <laughs> yeah, you need a mag drill. You're a metal guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but then again, if you for that kind of money, you can get a used the floor standing drill press yes. that, that you could basically just fling anything on and drill straight holes into. So, yeah. but do I have room for that? No. <laughs> a mag drill for me just screams bank robbery because that's the only way I've seen it in movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just clunk it onto the big vault and drilling out the lock and the, that sort of thing. Because I can't really think of it being used in any other sense then. You know, I'm so, I'm, I'm so pissed. Uh, one thing is, you start to see it on Instagram as well, but on TikTok, there's a trend where people put a video out and then it's very interesting and then they cut the video short and then, yeah, if you want to see how it ends, you have to find the second video and it's a pain in the ass finding that if the video is way down that guy's feed, you have to find it and like scroll and scroll and scroll. And of course, that is what they want. Yeah, because they want you to click on their videos and, and just trying to find it. So I'm just starting. Well, then I'm not watching the end of that. So screw you. But so have you thought about doing that with your YouTube videos then? Put your videos on TikTok for your hundred thousand views. If you want to see the end of this, I, go to find it on my YouTube. I hate it so much, and I like my followers. I'm not going to do that ever. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, some of the videos I've seen is actually people buying houses and discovering a floor safe or a wall safe that they don't have the key to. And of course, anyone cool. buying a house with a safe or a locked door, of course, you need to get a locksmith because, I mean, your imagination. Um, and then, of course, it's always an empty safe or just some documents, really boring stuff. So, but I see on online marketplace, there there is a lot of people giving away saves uh, just for you to come and pick them up because they are heavy. So yeah. people just want you to come and pick them up. That got me thinking. What if I do like with uh, like Colin Furs, not build a bunker, but if I just make a square hole in my workshop and I just uh, bury and cement in a safe and just put something either really funny or really disturbing. I saw someone, they got like <laughs> a, a half a million worth of fake money and then they put it underneath uh, <laughs> some uh, wall that they put up and like, uh, yep, this is going to be fun for the next owner of this house doing a, a renovation and then for five seconds thinking he hit the jackpot and then fuck, it's fake. <laughs> so yeah, something like that would have been really cool. Yeah, you should absolutely do that while you've got some gold paint left. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
<laughs> we just have a have a wall safe in your workshop just to to keep that really precious square or something like that. So you only <laughs> yeah. take out for special occasions. <laughs> the golden square. That's yeah. uh... <laughs> How would you crack a safe if you if you found one in your house? Would you get a locksmith in, or would you have a go at doing it yourself first? I, oh. I would have a go at doing it yeah. myself, and I would probably fail. Well, I mean, there... at what point would I stop? That's the question. I mean, there is not a safe a you can't enter without. I mean, if you have enough time and an angle grinder, I mean, you can get through. But at some point, you will have. Then so you much... don't have a safe <laughs> anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about the safe. Right. Uh, and then, of course, at some point, you don't want to do something that put too much heat into it because if it yeah. ruins something on the inside, and that is usually where you end up. All right, I need a locksmith. I think the uh, the stopping point is when it's cost you over a thousand pounds in cutting discs or drill bits. <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth it anymore. <laughs> That's the thing, though. Uh, a locksmith isn't cheap either. And then, of course, uh, seeing everything uh, online, it's it's, it's going to be wasted money, most likely. And then, <laughs> well, of course, I, I could just make a, a YouTube series out of it. Yeah. I found the wall safe. Now... I'm a locksmith. Uh, all right, so I got some tools. I'm going to learn this. No, that doesn't work. And that, <laughs> that's a, that's a good year. Try, yeah. This week I'm going to try and crack the safe with a cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just hope it's a combination lock. And every day you post a short with you trying a new number. <laughs> you yeah. can comment below what you should try and that sort of thing. I spent too much time in... I, I don't know where he got it. Um, my father, uh, at his old work, he had a combination lock for a safe. They also had a safe in the office, which were left there from the previous uh, company who rented the place. Um, and I have played a lot with that lock because it was loose, so you could see how everything worked on the backside. Of course, all the locks are different, but the plates that are lining up, that's probably a lot uh, of similarities between the different lock brands and like as long as you can see them it's very easy so you could very easily figure out the code but i spent hours just putting my ear to that thing and all right do i okay now it's lining up <laughs> and then you switch it nope so okay that's not the sound to listen for and so yeah that's fun that's, uh, that's a fidget to that, toy you can only hear it when you get to that last number of the combination then there's a little bit of a click before you can pull the handle and it opens. Yeah, the problem is there, there is no click of the plates lining up, basically. The click is when you turn the handle and it's like, <laughs> it opens. When we, there's a safe at a garden center I worked at and we used to, there was, used to be a swine to get into with the combination. So whenever, you <laughs> yeah. put, whenever you put that last number in, it made a different noise. Oh. <laughs> something something moved. I we, just we had an a... old safe. <laughs> We had a problem uh, when we went on vacation this summer. Uh, the big suitcase ac accidentally locked itself <laughs> when we were away. <laughs> what was the combination? I don't remember. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I sat there and I think I went through like 200, 250 combinations or something before my wife oh it's the kids birthdays yeah let's try that <laughs> yeah. that's the thing though i mean if it's a uh, on a lot of the suitcase it's just three numbers and that yeah. is that is doable in an afternoon uh, yeah but the... it's kind of boring it's <laughs> 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 And of course, you have the the four digit one. Then it's now it becomes interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But these are I, I've seen people. Uh, I think it's a lock picking a lawyer. I mean, it's uh, on those locks. It's it's very easy to uh, if you just apply some pressure on the opening thing and you just jog the first wheel till you feel a certain resistance. And all right, then you go to the next one and you do the same. And they're relatively easy to open. Um, hmm. And there's also this, um, um, there is also some uh, way to open them. I mean, you use them at uh, airports and so on, but airport security do random checks on checked in luggage as well. If there is something that uh, shows up on the scan, so they, they know how to open those locks. So they are not very, very difficult. And I, sh I saw one 
guy at an airport once said if, if someone puts on a, a specialty lock that they haven't seen before or something and they struggle a bit with it then yeah you just do like this on the zip lock and you can open it from the other end and then yeah <laughs> so the lock <laughs> is just for show yeah, yeah i mean uh, <laughs> locks generally are for keeping uh kids out more or less or people just being kids and drunks. being assholes yeah. <laughs> If you want to go th- go through a door, no luck will stop you if you just have enough will to do it and, and some tools and time. And that's cool. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but when we bought this house, it had a workshop. And in that workshop, one of the tools that were left was a huge ass lock cutter. And... Of course, people at work know, all right, you have tools. Uh, I have uh, lost the keys to my bike lock or something. Do you have? Oh, yes. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, <laughs> on the train uh, with my backpack and like the um, the bolt cutters. bolt cutters are sticking up and uh, people are really giving you the eye. And then you just hand it over to someone <laughs> and they said, all right, I went and cut my locks. But you, you feel like a criminal because everybody sees you <laughs> when you're like going up to a bike and... <laughs> and then take it with you. Yeah. It is mine, I, I promise. <laughs> I don't know if I told this story or not, but I mean, it always cracks me up. When I moved into my student apartment, uh, we actually had a, a hardware store uh, at a walking distance that uh, closed at nine o'clock in the evening, which was really nice if you needed something. So I yeah. was there at like 8.45 one, one evening and uh, there was more or less no one else there. And then three, three uh, young guys came in like, 18, 20 years old, and they only bought the biggest bolt cutter they had. And they walked out. <laughs> so, they're probably up to no good. <laughs> I'm not going to ignore this. I'm sure, it was completely innocent. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably, probably. <laughs> probably just some very young makers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, making a YouTube video, and there you are calling the cops on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be a narc. <laughs> uh. Oh, it's like... So I bought something new. Ooh, something old, new, but new. new to me. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> something you don't want to know. Some, no. Something you borrowed, something know. blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went on the Facebook Marketplace, and there was a a wet and dry um, bench grinder for sale for fifteen quid. That nice. sounds like not at all what it should cost. Exactly. <laughs> So I went and bought it. (laughs) Nice, nice. (laughs) And it seems to be fine. It absolutely seems to be fine. It's a little bit old, but it works. It's clean. So you don't even have to grease it or anything? No, no. I'm going to clean it up at the weekend, uh, just because it's got a bit of wood dust on it. But um, yeah, no, it seems absolutely perfect. Nice. Definitely worth fifteen quid. Yeah. That almost sounds boring. <laughs> yeah, and I, I also off the chat bought a, a very tiny set of wood turning chisels, normal length but very very fine for pen turning. Oh, I thought oh, that yeah. was something yeah. you just chucked in for uh, like good measure when you bought the <laughs> grinder. <laughs> no, he threw in a piece of wood for oh, good yeah. measure. That's <laughs> when do here. <laughs> Have a log. You can grind this. <laughs> it does look like a fire log. It's a piece of uh, English yew, which apparently is quite hard to get hold of. Yeah, but uh, it might end up on the fire if I can't think of anything to turn out of it. <laughs> Depends how desperate we get towards the end of February when we run out of wood. <laughs> yeah. John's Elm Bell's here as well. That might go on. <laughs> It was really interesting. The chap had, uh, he was a little bit younger than me, but he had a quite a big workshop, probably twice the size of mine. There was a wooden shed in the uh, back garden. And he was just, he just stopped woodworking about a year ago, lost his interest and was selling all this stuff. Yeah. Hmm. That sounds sad. Yeah. The, the, did it seem like he had another interest that was pouring all this time and love into? Like he had a car or something like that. Working it was, on the... it, Actually, we did talk about it. It was guns. <laughs> it was into shooting. Uh, yeah, that's uh, quite an expensive hobby here. It, yeah, I mean, every hobby can be expensive, and that is yeah, one of those true. that the sky's <laughs> yeah. the limit if you, yeah. if you want to. Yeah. yeah. It's quite interesting talking to him, though. You know, you asked me 
we were talking about wood chisels last week, AJ, turning chisels. And you said, is there a shop nearby that sells them? And I said, no, the nearest one's an hour and a half away. It's actually Mr. Tools. Well, apparently there's one in Lincoln, just off, the <laughs> high str- just off the high street, which I've been down a million times, but I don't go off the high street. <laughs> so you need to do a little close to home safari. Yes. Yeah, I'll have a, might have a little wander out there at the weekend and uh, just have a look. That'd be nice. Sorry, I fell off the wagon here. Um, is it possible with my ADHD something? Uh, is there a <laughs> hobby out there that could just make me... Well, I don't want to do making anymore. Because I see, I, I mean, all the different tools and all the different trades, that's just... Uh, it really aligns with me having a short attention span. And now I want to do that. And now I want to do this. Yeah. And once you've done some of that, I can implement that later in something else. But then it's an interesting thought. What is out there that just, when I discover it, it just, ah, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm a power knitter now. This Everything <laughs> falls into place and you just sell your workshop, your tools, your everything. You move into a cave and become an hermit, and you're as happy as can be for the rest of your life. That's yeah. Be happy until the next thing grabs you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but <laughs> that's how it is today. I mean, I find something yeah. new and like, all right, now I'm a metal worker, and then last week yeah. it was woodworker, and then there's going to be something else. That's yeah. the beauty of making, isn't it? There's so many facets to it. It's, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's yeah. enough to keep you busy for years. I can't wait till you get to your knitting phase, though. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh there's a lot of things I want to do knitting wise, but it's it's time consuming and you have to sit still. I mean you don't have to, I say you can probably make a pouch to go on your belly so you can knit yeah. on the go, but yeah. We went to a market earlier on this year actually and uh, it was a maker market and there was a woman there selling knitted goods and she was just talking to people as they were coming up to the stall and she was just knitting. She wasn't looking at what she was knitting, but she was just knitting automatically and just speaking and going about her everyday business. And it was just a completely automatic thing to her. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same with uh, my mother-in-law. She was a big knitter uh, and also a quilt. <laughs> and she did, she did everything by hand, but when she didn't have a specific project, I mean, she could knit the sweater in an afternoon. It felt like, but I mean, if she if you asked her for something specific where she needed to like read instruction, then she got really pissed because then she had to focus. But when she didn't have a specific project, she still needed to knit. And then she made socks on autopilot. She, she could make socks in an afternoon without even looking at what she was doing. So twice a year, like we were at a family gathering, she came in with like two Ikea bags with woolen socks and like, here, have at it, take as much as you want because I don't have enough cupboards for these. And then, so we, we still have socks to last us a lifetime. <laughs> I love those, that expression when you, she's a big knitter, but she's a big woman who knits. <laughs> 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 it's like when you refer to a, a small shop down the road selling something. You say, oh, the little guy down the road sells them, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just love that, those expressions. Oh. <laughs> Never thought about that. <laughs> we can think about it some more, and uh, I think we'll call it a night tonight, shall we? And uh, move on over to the half pint. You should. Oh yes, yeah. going to sleep. That's nice. <laughs> so uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week when we are one year old. There we are. Ooh, that's nice. Let's talk about that in the half pint. Yeah, we let's should. do that. <laughs> Oh, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. I just need to do the intro now, don't I? <laughs> you should. Yeah, you forgot that. <laughs> I didn't forget it. So. No, you choose not to. <laughs> somebody stomp somebody in. didn't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, to be fair, I don't even remember what we talked. No. About in the beginning, so if I were <laughs> to make an intro now and like try to make it segue into what we started with, I have no clue. <laughs> That's Ben's problem. Yep. Hello. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hello and welcome to number one crude mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes with myself, Glenn from Number One Projects, KJ from Crude But Efficient, and Ramon. 